Hi, I'm Steve Dale for the American College of Veterinary Internal Medicine. Dr. Kevin Gullickers is an internal medicine specialist. We've heard about Cushing's disease, or you might have. What is that? Cushing's disease is a syndrome where the body's adrenal glands produce excess cortisol. Uh, cortisol is a steroid hormone needed for life. We all need very small amounts of it in our body to go about our day-to-day -day business. But in some patients, uh, about 85%, 90% of patients develop a very, very tiny tumor in their pituitary gland in the brain that produces excess stimulatory hormone that causes the adrenal glands to produce too much of this cortisol and long term that causes some deleterious effects. In about 10 to 15 percent of patients they can actually develop an adrenal tumor and that tumor then produces too much cortisol which causes the same effects. Okay, now I, I suspect that, okay, we, we, you've got cortisol, I do, our dogs do, but Correct. too much is the problem here. Yes. And, and what are some of the symptoms that, that we should look for in our dogs? Because caught early, like a lot of things, it, it can make a difference. Absolutely. Um, the main symptoms that a pet owner is going to notice are that their dog will be drinking a lot more and have subsequent increase in urination. Um, other symptoms that commonly happen with increased cortisol are excessive panting, uh, pacing or listlessness, and uh, what we call polyphagia, or developing a really ravenous appetite. They'll eat very, very quickly and often be very, very hungry. Hmm. Uh, an another thing is that sometimes do they look like they've been drinking too much beer? Uh, true, uh, a pot-bellied appearance can also occur because um, the body puts excess fat around the midsection, and so they get a pot-bellied appearance. And another symptom that can occur with long-term Cushing's is changes to the hair coat. They'll develop hair loss in certain sections along their side and on their belly. Now, the good news is there's treatment for this. There absolutely is. There's two treatments on the market right now uh, that are both very effective and can be used in different situations. The first uh, medication called Mitotane has been around for many, many years, been around since the 60s. And it is a very interesting drug in that it actually kills off part of the adrenal gland so that you produce less cortisol. And it can be used for adrenal tumors and be effective in those cases too. But since it does kill off part of the adrenal gland, it's very important to use that drug cautiously and correctly in, in somebody who's experienced using it. The other drug that just came on the market in the past couple of years, much newer, much uh, different drug is called Trilostane. And what it is, it's an enzyme blocker so that it uh, prevents the body from producing too much cortisol, it blo blocks the enzyme that produces cortisol. You know, sometimes, and, and do these treatments work, by the way? They work very well. So does that pop elite appearance go away, the list, listlessness that some of these dogs have, the pacing, I mean, all of what you described, the increased thirst, increased appetite, does that sort of revert to normal? Absolutely. Uh, some of those symptoms correct much quicker than others. Um, the excessive drinking and eating uh, will reverse very, very quickly, um, usually within a matter of days, um, sometimes a couple weeks. The other effects, the, the pot-bellied appearance, the hair loss, that takes longer, usually on, the, on a few months. You know, as, as pet owners, sometimes, I mean, you could look at your dog and say, well, I know I've been feeding my dog too many treats, or maybe it's an older dog, and often the dogs with Cushing's disease are older dogs. Uh, and, and some of what we describe here with the symptoms, maybe it's been a hot summer, so the dog is drinking more. I mean, we, we kind of explain it away in our heads. And I'm a huge fan, anyway, of twice a year veterinary visits, because we don't have the ability to do lab work at home. And, and we could describe what's going on, and then you can put that together in a way which we, we cannot. I, I agree with you, absolutely. And I think the other important thing about those visits is it's sometimes hard for us to not notice these changes coming on, and, and they can be very subtle. Um, and yet when your vet or a specialist sees the patient, you know, we can see these changes are much more dramatic to us. And so those visits are imperative. And as you mentioned, too, looking then at blood work and getting some hints, um, we're noticing a population of pets now that are developing what's called atypical Cushing's in which 
different hormones are elevated and causing problems in the body, but not necessarily the symptoms I describe. And so those things are being caught on blood work that then take us down a road to further investigation so we can help those patients because long-term Cushing's can have much more serious side effects than just the inconvenience of excessive urination or hair loss. Um, long-term, there can be problems with high blood pressure, blood clot development, uh, kidney damage, and so these are important things to try to, to treat and prevent. So caught way late or uh, really not catching it at all, that's a big problem. It is, it really is. I think this is a disease that can have really serious long-term consequences and catching it early is definitely better. I'm all about that. You can learn more at acvim.org. Dr. Gullikers, thank you very much. Thank you.